Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of videos where I tell you the price I think you should buy games for. Weird? Ah, deal with it. First things first, let's talk about The Binding of Isaac. I love this game. The amount of effort the creators have put into this game makes it incredibly enjoyable to play. Rarely do you see such a simple game taken to such heights of complexity by adding the addition of so much content. At first glance, it doesn't seem like much. Another look leads to its absolute brilliance. A diamond in the rough, a platinum god amongst games. Or maybe it's just a bunch of babies crying over happy poops. Let's take a moment to talk about gameplay for a second, because we're all about originality here. The controls for this game are fairly simple, where even the most casual gamer can play them for the first time and know all the controls, probably because there's such little of them. The first room that Isaac spawns in lays them out quite nicely, and if you want to change them, you can even go into your options and change them to your preferences. The mechanics of this game are what separates it from any of its kind. There are two kinds of items to be found in Binding of Isaac pick up items like hearts that replenish health to keys that open doors. Basic items that help you progress through the game. But behind those doors you open, and sometimes hidden in other places, are the items that really take your experience to the next level. Most of these items are passive, meaning they activate and stay activated as soon as you pick them up. The other kinds are spacebar activated items that recharge after defeating certain number of rooms containing enemies. Keeping track of all these items and what they do can really be a hassle at times. Having to search the wiki to make sure you don't pick up an item that would otherwise ruin your run. The goal of the game is simple. Get to the end of each level until you defeat your mother. Like real life, I guess. The added levels after you beat the main boss are both clever and very disturbing. If you enjoy music in your video games, and boy do the developers of this game have a treat for those ear holes of yours. The music of this game does a good job of not being distracting, but at the same time noticeable enough to set the tone for each level. Although good, it doesn't compare to the music of the first game, and a remade version of the previous game's music would probably have been a better choice. Many times have I entered the game room expecting a catchy little tune from the original Binding of Isaac, only to be disappointed with whatever unrememorable tune was playing through my headphones. Aesthetically, this game seems a bit of a downgrade from the original. Now I understand there is a lot more detail in this game than the original, but the stylized flash look for the older game really felt like it fit the game more than the pixelated reboot. I first played the challenge Pitch Black before anything else, and I thought it was what the game was really like. Dark and atmospheric, with torches being your main source of light, as well as the aura around Isaac. I was disappointed later to find out that it was just Curse of the Darkness that had caused this atmosphere, and most of the game was played in the original, brighter environments. It almost seems like a missed opportunity that they didn't make each stage a little darker and foggier. Maybe not to the degree of Curse of Darkness, but still dark and gloomy. Moving on to cutscenes, in this game I feel that they were animated in almost a way that doesn't fit the game. I like how they stayed true to the original Binding of Isaac, but there was something about them that I just didn't enjoy. It could possibly be the art style, but I felt like they just didn't fit the dark and depressing atmosphere this game was going for. This game is definitely a long one, with multiple playthroughs to complete the story mode lasting up to 100 plus hours for new players. Along with extras and being 100% complete, the game can take up to 250 hours to collect all items. One thing about the Binding of Isaac that bothers me the most was after becoming increasingly good at the game, the first couple levels for each run becomes boring and tedious. With stats being very small, it's almost a waste of time to even play the basement level, if not for the item on that floor. Being roguelike, or roguelite, it does have the punishing playstyle where one wrong move can end your entire run. The game really emphasizes luck as opposed to skill. This isn't to say that skill won't help you. Try beating the first boss without knowing how to dodge an enemy's attack. It is just unfortunate that each run relies on so many variables. Am I going to get a key from the item room this floor? 
Will I get the boss that has a fixed item? So much can go frustratingly wrong with a single run and test your patience to the point where you want to uninstall the game entirely. Overall, I believe that if you can pick up this game for 1272 or less, why a specific number? I don't know, it's the number I picked. This game is definitely not for everybody, but it is accessible to everyone. Whenever this puppy goes on sale, you should grab it as fast as you can, you won't regret it. Or you might, I really don't know what games you're into. Thanks for watching my video. If if you're interested in seeing more, I don't have any more. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wait, be patient. But I will be posting more if this does actually take off. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Or don't. I don't have the, the item that makes you shoot psychic tears. I'm not, I don't, I can't make you force you to do things.